for last. And I'm very excited about our next speaker. He's coming from Florida today, global experience in one of the great enduring organizations of our time. And I'm talking about Michal Wierzchowski, who is running the JBIL EMS materials and BPM organization. He has nearly 20 years of industry experience and is successfully running BPM implementation as a leading element of organizational change. Mihal is driving digital transformation strategy that's being followed by the belief that the best ideas come straight from the source and making digital transformation stick is simply a case of putting those ideas into practice across the board. So Mihal, always a pleasure to listen from you, from you because you have the strategy, you have the most important part of it, which is the strategy execution across a global organization. And you always provide such great practical insights. Very grateful for you to take your time to share that expertise with our global audience today. Thank you, Jose. I'm really excited to be here, guys, together with you. Um, let me run. Um, let me run my presentation. Uh, as always, um, uh, as I said, it is a pleasure to be here and, and be able to to share our story. Um, I just was mentioning, um, I am coming with a 20 years worth of experience from the industry. I'm working for JB Company, and before I will go with the profile of the company and a few other insights, just wanted to let you know that. Um, Having a privilege to run materials organization, the same as the business process management uh, implementation, gave me a really great insight on uh, how to how efficiently run the organization, but also how uh, efficiently inject or in, in evolve a new technology. So let me go with a with a presentation, and after after the presentation, there will be a, a time for the questions. So when we go through that, prepare your questions, chat them to Jose. Or keep them, and then we will we can we can get back uh, onto that after after the whole uh, slideshow. So uh, moving forward, what I'm going to talk today about it is a little bit of the introduction to what we what we do, who JBL is, and uh, where we are. And then after that, I would like to uh, give you a little bit of a uh, introduction to our journey, and uh, and, and and give you um, um, uh, some flavor of the next steps that we are putting in place because obviously business process management is is not not new uh new thing for us and then uh i've been um i've been privileged to share our story already through a couple of the other sessions but what i am equipping the presentation or the journey today it is by adding uh the new elements that uh that we were continuously implementing as part of the next steps of the of the journey so jbill we are a um, global manufacturing solutions provider and our ambition is to become the most technologically advanced and trusted manufacturing solution provider. So if you look onto, onto where we are, we are all, almost every market in the world. Um, we have uh, 200 plus employees across the globe, 400 uh, plus customers. So it is giving you already a, a little bit of a flavor on how the how big organization is and uh, and, and and how challenging it is to uh, run the standardization in in optimization. And I think together with my team, we found a, a really good way to take an advantage of different segments or the markets that we are uh, we are operating in, combining the knowledge of the of the people that are coming from the source. Which are our our people at the facilities who are physically touching the products and, and manufacturing them, and then aggregate them uh, onto the really uh, really good and condensed um, uh, program that is helping us to drive uh, innovation. So when you look onto the localization, right, we are uh, we are present in 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 almost every place in the world, right? Asia, Europe, Latin America, North America. You can see uh, amount of the places in the cities. Um, uh, we have uh, we have a pretty well diversified team, which is uh, which is of course helping us to drive the innovation and making sure that um, uh, that we take an advantage of different uh, point of view, but also it is helping us to accelerate uh, uh, accelerate the, 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 the continuous improvement and the way how we operate. So our overall idea when we start uh, with business process management was to uh, focus on the standardization, right? When we look on our company, 
we obviously we started to see that the complexity of the market is increasing, right? And the complexity of the products and the, and the number of the customization or configuration that uh, that we have to operate with is 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 increasing. So what what we've seen is that the uh, that the complexity complexity uh, was being uh, being followed by uh, by the cost. So our hypothesis that we put in place was to uh, focus on the simplification, making sure that uh, we are defining the cost optimization and uh, we are leveraging uh, the power of the human brain that we have in the organization so that we can incubate innovation, best practices and bring them up. So when you when you think about the way how we were approaching that, it was simply to focus on standardization uh, through the business process management, and and we and and we put it on, in the way that uh, 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 the, the the blueprint management or or business process management we adopted to our internal uh, um, uh, acronym, and and we call it integrated blueprint management, which is really where our, uh, recognized by our team. So our three major steps that we were following was to standardize and simplify so that uh, we can build sustainable operational excellence and of course our people is our power so that uh, we were building everything around how the process is supposed to work what is uh, what what are the allowed potential variations or, uh, or or special processes that we should keep however we were focusing on what is the portion of the process that should stay um, uh, standardized across the board then from there, we were talking about the innovation and we were running through the um, um, definition of what are the transformational outcomes that we are expecting to see. So that it took us to the point where we are able to build a new uh, value propositions from starting from uh, operational excellence, going through the me new business uh, model uh, um, uh, design, as well as improved customers' uh, customers experience, right? So when, when you think about the overall journey, the way how we are organizing that in the, in the company, we have top, bottom, bottom, top type of the approach. So you can see uh, from the overall objectives of the company, from the global to the regional team, to the site level, uh, we are broadcasting what is the expectation from the, from the company perspective. But at the same time, the ownership and the injection of the, all of the innovation and the, and the best practices are coming from the sides who, who, who understand the best, how, what, is the, what is the most optimal way to operate. And then all of those things is being, being surrounded by three elements, adopt, align, execute. And those are the three major elements. When we talk about the execution, we have our uh, internal um, uh, JBL operating system that is allowing us to understand what's going on, where are the potential challenges, where are the successful processes so that we can interchange that between the sides. Through the unified metrics, we were analyzing how we are performing from the company perspective and we were adopting to what are the expectations versus what are the results that are coming from the, from the sides so that we could define what we should do better. And then here is where integrated blueprint management is fitting the best because that is how we were aligning the objectives with executions. So when I when I when I think about our journey, it was really well crafted, starting from the strategy perspective, where together with the executive team, uh, throughout all of the uh, throughout all of the levels of the company, we were defining what we expect to have, and then from there we were converting that. Now when we know what we are expecting, what is the best way to organize it? So so here is where we step into the integrated blueprint management, and then when I think about IBPM, which stands for Integrated Blueprint Management, as they say, I think about GPS. So the very first, first thought that you guys are having by looking onto that screen, just hold it because as I will go throughout the, throughout the next slides, it will be all about us being able to define what is our final destination, define what are the potential roadblocks, who should be engaged, what are the traffic lights, where are the congestions, and then deal with all of those uh, potential challenges, but also a best practices so that we can choose the best way to get to the final destination and the the most optimized way. Okay. So when 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 I when I talk about IBPM, there are five major elements that we defined as a company. There were five pillars where we say, first of all, we need to define what is our integrated uh, blueprint. So we digitize all of our processes from the beginning till the end. 
The second element, we say, now when we understand what are our processes, we have to make sure that we have a clear roles and accountabilities. So it was the, to revise who is engaged, who is the owner, who is going to drive what, and what are the accountabilities. The third element that we put in place was to make sure that we have a cross-functional interaction within the organization. So starting from the top leaders, going to the uh, process experts, we were building a forums that were on the one hand defining a, a strategy, on the other hand, were able to translate this strategy to the next level on the organization. So those forums are allowing us to to stay connected throughout the organization and make sure that our process is cutting across uh, expectations and we know how to translate it to the execution side of it. The fourth element was to combine those three because even though you have a, a right process, even though you have the roles and accountabilities and the forums, you, you need to have efficient way and a fast way to run the collaboration. So here is where we were talking about uh, the solution that potentially can help us to run um, um, to run uh, effective uh, communication among our process experts and make sure that there is no delay between the way how we want to run the process versus the way how the process could be improved. And then the fifth element that we put, and it is a conclusion of, uh, of all of those five pillars, is how we are going to control and measure our process performance in the way that every process uh, breakage or the violation can be recognized and it can be it, it can be actioned in the way that uh, our uh, final financial results or operational efficiency won't get affected if something is not uh, is not being followed as it should. Now, the process performance is not only to detect if something is going wrong. It is also to recognize if our baselines are defined right. So if there is a any deviation from the process and we detect that, uh, we detect those, uh, we are defining if, if those should be uh, used as our uh, baselines. And this is a really great uh, conclusion of, of digitization, responsibility, connectivity, or connection between the different groups, um, time to response to the collaboration platform, finally defining if we how how well we are doing from the process perspective so then when you think about the way how those five pillars are being supported or equipped with it is it is very simple five layers that are helping us to connect processes strategic view performance throughout the different layers of 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 the way how operation or how the organization works so we are always starting from the process we always connect the process with our procedures and then we drag it onto the level of the tools so that the first three steps are helping to understand how we are going to run the organization, what are the principles, what are the, uh, uh, what are the uh, uh, rules on the road, what are the compliance uh, related elements, and then we are pulling this down to the tool and then defining how the tool can support the process. So the first three elements are helping to run the translations, of the strategy and how it is going to be executed within an organization, but also it is allowing us to capture those best practices that will be injected back. The, remain, the, the, the next two steps, which are the KPIs and the data, those are the ones that are helping us through the process performance define how well are we doing so that we can measure our financial performance, but also our process performance so that we can react in the almost in the real time and then put it back onto our baselines. And then the data, uh, data are becoming really, really super clear, super, uh, super important because through the data analytics, not only we understand how our process uh, perform, but also we understand where our attention should be, either from the investment perspective or for, from the continuous Im improvement perspective. So those five elements all together, they are surrounding the organization throughout the different functional groups and then focusing on the process making sure that there are right uh, standard operating procedures, tools that are supporting the process, measurements, and then the data, they all correspond to each other to keep driving um, operational efficiency, but also, con also continuous innovation. 
So the way how we did it uh, from the performance perspective, we were breaking this down to the different uh, regions. And then we, after defining the baseline, we said, okay, now when we understand how the organization is supposed to be driven, let's measure that against how, what, is the, what, is the, what is the real way of, of running the processes. And we started to capture where the processes are being aligned and where are those that potentially uh, does contain some variations. And if any variations appear, then we were actioning them either to adjust to the baseline or we were adjusting the baseline because it was an enterprise type of the way to run the business. So when, it, when you think about the, the continuous journey, it was from the idea to the maturity. And when we start to, in 2019, it was, it was an idea where we said, we want to make sure that we understand our processes very well and very connected. JBL is really process oriented company uh, and, and we were having a really good understanding on how the processes are working, but what was the element that was, uh, that, that was required to get it to the next level? It was the full connection with a, with a clear transparency on how the processes are, are working. So, so following crawl, walk, run approach, we connect our processes, we went with the transformation, we put it into the environment, we empower our, our people to be the uh, custodians of the processes through the IBPM, and then they were carrying on uh, those processes and making sure that they evolve, but also uh, they were empowered to uh, demand the other functions to follow the process in exactly the same way as it is defined. And if it wasn't, then there was a healthy conversation and work to define what is the better way to work together. And then finally, uh, where we are today, we got onto the point where our processes are really well understood. Our people is our power, and all of the innovation, or most of the innovation, is coming from, the, from our facilities. So that we are getting onto the self-sustained uh, improvement cycle where we understand how our process is performing and then where the attention should be. So that, so that from here, we are stepping onto something that is helping us to define what is the better way to utilize, uh, to utilize the data that corresponds to every single process. And I'm going to talk briefly about uh, the, the next steps. Um, but before I will go uh, to that, I want to show you the, the first 15 months. Because if you think about the business process management, some of you might think it is giant subject. So, so the question is where to start. Some of you might think, well, I'm already along the way with business process management. So what are the next steps that they're supposed to uh, make, right? So if you look on the way how, how we were framing that, first of all, we started with, uh, with executive sponsorship. That was really, really super important. And I will tell you, it was easy to do it because JBL is process oriented company. And then there was nothing that the full support whenever we started to say, let's connect the processes. Let's make sure that they are corresponding with each other. And then we combine process, procedures, tools, KPIs, and the data. And then if you, if you go through the different uh, steps, building the framework, roles and responsibilities, forums, collaboration, process performance, those were the elements that Either they were driven independently so that we created the base and then we connect them, or they were getting onto the on board later on, around um, uh, along the way, so that we were finally able to connect all of those elements and get onto the point where we are. So where we are today, we have uh, really well organized processes, and then every process expert from the company that is playing this uh, um, custodian role can go into the system. Uh, we are using Signavio to, uh, to control the processes. So they can go to the system, navigate from the top, from the step one to the step four, and then get really clear um, understanding on what are the processes that corresponds with each other, what are the steps underneath, underneath every functional step, and how they, they correspond to the way uh, uh, on how our facilities execute those. Right, so going through that, it is it is helping to go to to get a view from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. 
So everybody is integrated. Everybody understand uh, potential dependencies. And uh, and one of the things that I'm I'm really excited about is that we eliminate the potential failure from not being or communicating communicating among different functions because the dependency is being recognized at the early early stage of recognizing our areas of the improvements but also our areas where we want to invest from the innovation perspective so when you think about that what it means in practice so in practice what it means for me it means that today you can make a decisions about every single element that is happening in the company now with this with the scale of the company that we are today it won't, it is not possible to make a decision about every single item that uh that the company performed so what we did starting from the process understanding where are those critical decisions we are um clustering uh the type of the decisions so when you look onto that by using a technology, we've started to analyze what are the similarities between different elements. So within the same bucket of the processes, let's say we are talking about the part numbers and the interaction with the suppliers. We've started to cluster a similarity between different parts, how they behave, and what is the way to execute those. And then we were defining actions for those clusters. So think about that, 500,000 different parts that we have to manage. If you will start to cluster them, then not not uh, then then you are not talking about deciding about 500,000 uh, parts. Suddenly, it is going to be a hundred of the decisions that you have to you have to make. And once you make those decisions, they will be broadcasted across uh, the massive amount of the of the other elements that we have to execute in the company. So that is one element, right? Of course, being equipped with the automation of the repeatable activities and, and many other elements, but but this is a this is a driver to make sure that we are not being focused on every single element that is happening in organization. By saying not focus, it is it is to not uh, forcing uh, an uh, organization to make decision about all of those things. It is more about combining those together and build uh, a decision rooms, breakout rooms, if I can call it like that. And then make those decisions upfront so that we can increase the efficiency and redirect uh, the focus or, or attention of our employees to the other elements. So we are gaining time to speed, quality of the decisions, but also financial performance. And then if you think about uh, you know um, how it helps the organization, just simply thinking about inventory by itself, by clustering a different type of the of the materials and different type of the decisions suddenly based on those groups you start to see what is the impact on your performance what is your financial impact and then you can correspond that to your processes and then at a glance you can see whether it is something that i have to or i can improve within that functional area or there are some other dependencies whether coming from uh, from manufacturing side, whether coming from the quoting or procurement or whatever, that we have to influence so that when we go, when it comes to the execution, we are improving and we are becoming uh, uh, we are getting onto the uh, performance excellence. So summarizing, business process management is is helping us to define how the organization works. It is as, as a company. It is helping us to empower our employees and um, give them the ability to make the decisions, but also to innovate. And they are becoming a part of the solution from day one. So all of the all of the uh, all of the best practices bubbling up and being connected to the processes immediately are helping us to deploy those best practices across the globe regardless from where they are coming. And then uh, where the business process management is taking us today, um, it is to get into the hyper automation, get into the utilization of the AI and machine learning so that we can cluster the decisions and then upfront uh, put, um, uh, put uh, uh, stronger intelligence um, uh, around the data analytics and then prepare the environment so that the decision Decisions can be made, first of all, uh, with the right quality, second, with the right speed, 
and third, taking care of our financials. So that would be that would be all uh, what I have for today. I hope that you enjoy uh, the session and uh, and 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 the story that that uh, that I was I'm privileged to share with you. Um, so if you have uh, if you have questions, I would like to get back to Jose to the main room and uh, let's see what are those questions. Thank you. Nihal, thank you so much. What a terrific presentation. What an incredible journey to do uh, business process management at this quality level and this scale is, is an incredible uh, endeavor. And uh, congratulations to you and the entire team at Jabo for, for um, staying resilient on this journey. It, uh, uh, lots of people in this conference who understand what it takes to do something like that at scale and uh, the challenges are phenomenal. So let's talk about some of those challenges and opportunities. Um, the, the first one is uh, re related to establishing ownership. How did you go about establishing ownership of this critical business processes around the world? And I have to believe that you may need to have regional process owners, you have overall process owners and then regional needs that need to be addressed and that, and that governance with process ownership can be really tricky in organizations, especially of this size. So can you talk a little bit about that, how sure. that, that happened? Sure, um, I think we were fortunate. Um, uh, me and my team, when we started to work with uh, with integrated blueprint management with, uh, with that aspect, because JBL as a company throughout the decades, right? We are 53 years on the market. Um, we built really strong functional expertise and something that is called subject matter expert um, uh, network, right? So I, I think you know I had uh, I had relatively easy easy uh, task to do when it comes to the ownership because what we did we didn't uh, change the organization uh, uh, tremendously, right? And and we all know how it works when you go and, and run a tremendous change of the organizational structure and, and those kind of things. Instead, what we did we said, you guys are responsible for the process. So what we have to do, we just need to connect site level experts, regional level experts, and a global level experts, and then we um, uh, we, we 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 build or or we reclassify the subject matter expert role to be a global process owner. So so what we did, we took an advantage of the existing structure and we just reframe it a bit, and then uh, we injected the the, the business process management governance into their work. So suddenly from uh, individual process experts being an owners of some portion of the procedure, some portion of the process, we built integrated view where global process owners are those uh, final uh, uh, decision point, if I can call it like that, and, and the person who, uh, um, who orchestrate the alignment across the regions and, and build some kind of a uh, federation, right? So, so everybody got connected and then when the processes between different regions potentially uh, could look different. What we did, we pull all of the five regions and we say, here's the baseline. This is how one region is doing. We think it is it is it is well defined way to increase the performance. And then we were we were checking with other regions whether it is something that we want to adopt. And then uh, in the democratic way, to some degree, uh, you know, inject it as a baseline. Or we say, you know what, we want to keep it as a some kind of uh, special uh, process variance that we want to keep for that specific customer or the region because it is country specific uh, regulation or it is customer specific needs. Very, very good. You know, that description is excellent. The execution can be quite challenging and uh, congratulations to you and the team. Uh, this connects to the discussion to what you presented, which was very sound with the need to for a standardization up front. You did a lot of standardization up front, uh, identify best practices and, and I standardize around those best practices seems like based on what you just mentioned, which is no trivial matter because it's easy for people to come to come together and say, oh yeah, we should standardize this process. And then you get six leaders around the table to discuss the standardization of the process. And every one of them quickly agrees that we should standardize the process and it should be my way of standardizing the process. So the collaborative leadership that's necessary to align those different mental models around the common mental model. Um, I'm curious about 
did you have some help and support on facilitating some of the discussions? How how was that done? The facilitation of the discussions about not only that we're going to standardize things, but this is what the standardization is going to look like. What does the facilitation look like for you? This is uh, this this is this is you know uh, the the way how we went through that, and and obviously it it is always a challenge when you put you know five, six strong leaders in one room and everybody wants to go with their own way, right? So um, again, because JBL is really process focused company. So what we did, it was uh, it, it, it was slightly slightly different, you know, than pulling the people in the room and asking them what is the best way. What we did, we say, this is what our procedures are saying. We craft the process, we connect them all together. And then thanks to the uh, cloud solution, uh, we define in Signavio how the how what is our belief that the process should look like, and then in the real time, instead of just connecting with a few people, we connected with our SMEs at the site level. So immediately they could go and say and and look onto the process, and we gave them some time to do it, and they say, "Yep, it works like that," or they say, "Nope, it doesn't work," and here's why, and this is what we potentially could do. And after collecting that feedback, then we brought in the you know the the, the global process owners and 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 in those you know the leaders within the function. And we say this is what your SMEs are saying. This is what the facility says, right? So 80% uh, of the processes look like that. Here is the 20% of the potential uh, variances that you have. So guys, let's agree on 80%, which is our baseline. What I'm asking you to do is to go and figure out the 20% and, and check if this is the, the true need to have those uh, variances and the deviations, or maybe we can we can standardize. So we, we change the conversations from saying, hey, let's build the process from the scratch and let's figure out what is the best way. We just put it uh, uh, according to our belief, how the organization works, and then we just check it with our people in the field, in the facilities. And I, and I think it end up being really good and after that, I had a couple of comments from my uh, functional peers where I said it was the best way to align and it was the best way to shift our attention to the true, uh, true elements that we have to analyze. And uh, Nihal, tell us a little bit about this process of standardization. I am sure that as you go through the standardization that there will be somewhere in the organization who raised their hands and says, hey, we're stifling innovation because we're standardizing these things or removing our thinking process from this and we're just going to accept things as they are. So, you know, we're not going to have innovation with standardization. So what is your talking point? How do you convince those individuals that standardization does not stifle innovation? Um, I, I think this, there, is, there is nothing more wrong that say that standardization is not enabling innovation. Right, because um, if everybody is special, nobody is special. Right. So, 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 so my thought process and the way how we are how we are working through that, it was more about first of all we need to understand our base, and then you know uh, the standardization uh, slogan might be received in different ways uh, by by different individuals and in, in different places. But what we did, we said standardization is going to take us to the point where we enable innovation. And then guess what? When we started to go through the standardization, immediately our people from the facilities, as I was mentioning, they have the best knowledge and the best ideas on how we can improve the process because they are touching that on a daily basis. So the standardization or you know the necessity of going to standardize the processes brought up all of those best practices that was nothing else than innovation, right? So when we when we went through a couple of the processes, immediately it became obvious for all of the all of the functional leads that the standardizations enable innovation. I love that. I love that answer. Of course, I asked that on purpose because I want to trigger you <laughs> because okay. it's such an important concept, right? Um, the essence of innovation is the ability to step back and take a different perspective at problems. And if and if you have a standardized process, you can look back at it and say, okay, this is what I like about it and this is what I don't like about it and this is how we can change it. But if it's a constantly moving target, you don't even know how you can improve and innovate on that because you don't even know what it is. 
So thank you for doing that. We're in an era where people are jumping into technology solutions so quickly and they are they are skipping over the steps that you so carefully laid out here in a very disciplined fashion. William Fuller comments, the process you described seems quite disciplined. What were some of the major hurdles you experienced, especially unexpected hurdles and consequences on employing this discipline? Um, so when when you think about you know the, the overall journey, right? Um, I, I wouldn't say they, they were like a consequences. For me, and, and, and probably it is it is it is it is it is because of my uh, personality, right? Every single day, every single event, I'm always looking for something to learn, right? And that that was the tone that we uh, uh, promote when we were running an implementation of the business process management. So, so if if you ask me about what are the consequences, I don't think that we we've had like a, some major consequences of the discipline because discipline uh, force us. Um, to to be more organized and have a really straight uh, synergy between process and the people, right? So, so I would say that there were a couple of the turns that we've had uh, during the journey, right? Uh, where we had to define about the tools, about the structure of the data, about you know the, the way how the process works, whether we should adjust the process or maybe we should look for for some new technology or a tool. But I, you know, the organization uh, was was treating, and, and myself personally, we were treating that as the uh, revision of the strategy. And if there was something that we had to adjust, we were doing that. But I wouldn't say that there were like, you know, some major consequences of uh, of putting the discipline. And and you know, I, I'm I'm far away from saying it was a discipline or the governance because again, JB throughout the 50 years built a really strongly, really solid. Uh, process-oriented uh, behavior and the culture. So, so the discipline and in in the way how it was working, it was it it was not new thing, right? So just putting into the framework around the business process management and then connecting that in, with innovation. Suddenly, people who were uh, defining the best practices at at the site level, when they saw that their input or their innovation is being used as the baseline. It was nothing that the strong motivation for them to feel a, uh, that they are part of bigger picture and they are enabling innovation moving forward. You are in mute. I cannot hear you. Let me make sure I unmute myself so you yeah. can hear me, <laughs> number one. Uh, let's shift the conversation momentarily to technology. Um, Karen Zanetti mentions uh, that what a masterclass of your journey. And, uh, and she's curious because you talked about Signavio as your collaboration platform. Is, is that what you're using? And I think that that's a yes on that, yes. right? You have used Signavio yes. as a collaboration platform. And, and what does that do for you? And by the way, Signavio is not a sponsor on this conference. It's just that, you know, it's working for you and we want to know what, yep. how is that enabling, how the technology is enabling collaboration. Yeah. And so, so listen, for me, um, those five pillars are equally important that if you remember from uh, from the slides that I was showing, right? And I wouldn't say that any of those of those pillars is the leading element. Now, when you ask me about the technology and what uh, Signavio did for us, it was, first of all, centralized, digitalized place of having the baselines, right? So uh, so having having integrated, and you can do it in, 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 in different tools, right? You could use, you know, there, there's plenty on the market. Uh, what was the breaking point for us? It was an ability to have an access to the processes almost in the real time by our SMEs. So that that was a that was a really true breakthrough as part of the business process management. When you ask me about the technology, right? Um, and 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 then obviously you know uh, the way how we utilize uh, Signavio it is to define our business process map. So that everybody understand where they are located and where to go to find the process definition, the procedures, the tools, KPIs, and the data. So this is what what the business process management um, uh, platform is 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 enabling for for us. Terrific, centralized, 
visual approach to developing this common mental model of what the process is and and how it's defined so that that's terrific now um now if we if i go to the next step now that you have uh you have your architecture of key business processes and you are standardizing them you're making improvements and innovations uh from a technology perspective what are the technologies today that are really making a difference for you in on the ground not just hype but really helping rpa or ai or nlp what is really helping you that you think is really creating value for the organization right now um yeah so to, to answer that question i have to um i have to loop it back a bit to uh what are, what are, what is the next uh giant um uh, milestone that we are putting uh in place and we are in, in progress to do it as when i was talking about the clustering uh different events and then defining the way how we can do make a decisions uh for 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 similar uh behaviors etc right so um you know we are at the stage where we are building uh, a really true predictive environment so that we want to know what is the potential failure that is coming from the protests all of the disruptions what is supply chain and uh, guys you you know exactly what is happening right now with supply chain right we are at the point where the shortages are pretty obvious for everybody and everybody is fighting for every single uh material right but uh but when when i think about you know what are the technology that are going to enable us they are going to be strict connected to the data analytics and then becoming more predictable with what is going to happen right so by engaging rpa and then um uh defining those fundamental repeatable activities that uh, that are automated uh, definitely is the technology that uh that is is taking us there um, um ai and machine learning from the perspective where we can on the one hand define the formulas uh to follow and prepare the recommendations for our employees to make the decisions versus the learning ability from those decisions and then keep them into the into the overall company cycle those are definitely elements that uh that are going to uh, or are already uh, walking along the way together with uh, with everything what we drive towards the predictability. Very well, very well. That that's great insight. Um, Michal, one final question. You've we've been gone through a fantastic journey here. Very disciplined, very well thought out in in, in the view of not only myself but the audience who who makes comments about what you have shared with us. Um, is it creating value? Uh, how I, I know you have health metrics for the processes and you're looking at KPIs and all that, but are you are you are you being able to tangibly quantify the value creation on on this journey? How you're going about doing that? Yeah. So um, when you think about the you know the, the way how how the improvements or the innovation is happening, obviously every element. Is being equipped with the uh, with the ROI, right? So how it is helping us and uh, and how we are quantifying those, it is it is really simple by looking onto the process and having a clear clear understanding what is the company flow, uh, what are the major decisions that uh, financial or operational decisions that are going uh, that are happening or or we are making throughout the process, defining uh, the 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 areas that are going to to on the one hand and make people life easier because that is that is a major element and and make people safe uh but also what are the major decisions about around our financials um it is just building a really clear transparency what we are targeting versus what are the what are the outcome, outcomes right so you know if you think about the business process management it is it is it is all about uh clarity and common definition or when the attention should be if you don't have this clarity, then you can put an attention on different uh, elements that are not getting to, uh, connected, right? So the value of the business process management is to target the specific elements that are going to be improved or are going to be innovate, and then uh, keep the organization and the experts all together so that we are heading towards the same goal. That's terrific, Michal. Thank you so much. It's always a masterclass. The journey that you have been with Jabo um, is fantastic. You do a great job uh, communicating that. And uh, I, on behalf of our global audience, we're very grateful for the insights and practical perspectives that you provide. Thank you so much again. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, see you next time, guys.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Michal Wierzchowski, uh, Senior Director of Operation Solutions at Jabil, uh, really sharing with us a very disciplined approach, a very um, effective and efficient approach uh, for their journey of digital transformation for true value creation. Um, terrific presentation. Uh, it wraps up day three of our three-day conference. It has been, as usual, a tremendous pleasure to be your guide and, uh, and a student during this process, learning from all of you, sharing and, uh, and collaborating uh, through the Q&As that we have and, uh, and the interactions and the uh, insights that I get from the speakers, from our, uh, from our highly qualified audience members. And it's a, it's a true pleasure. So we'll wrap up by saying our thanks and gratitude to Brian Raffle and Ken Chan Singh, who make this all happen so seamless. Tremendous work on the production team to allow the many pieces of speakers from all over the world uh, and different types of technologies that we deal with and content. And uh, Brian and Kan Chan, they do a, a magnificent job in making this all come together. Also, thanks to Vijay Baja, the CEO of Procus Digital for having the vision and to realizing this vision all the way prior to the pandemic and then through the pandemic and consistently sharing this cross industry thought leadership with all of us so that we can all uh, improve and innovate for value creation. And of course, our sponsors, Kintone and UiPath for bringing world-class virtual events to a global audience and creating tremendous value for all of us. So Kintone and UiPath, thanks for your leadership Thanks for your uh, sponsorship of this event and this access that you create for all of our professionals. Now, our next conference is the Business Transformation Operational Excellence World Summit focused on process mining. Process mining live will be August 10th through August 12th. So please make sure that you register if you're interested in the, in the latest best practices, approaches, strategies, and execution related to process mining that registration is already open and uh, i hope that you take the time to go into the post on linkedin and thank our sponsors thank our speakers for you know for sharing their expertise um so openly with us and uh, they appreciate hearing back from you and i know many of you have already done that we have had thousands of interactions and views on the posting and we really appreciate that because uh your perspectives and your uh gratitude matters tremendously to the sponsors and the speakers who volunteer their time and effort and uh, and even more than that to make this all work so without further ado i would want to wish everyone a great rest of your day a great rest of your week and i hope to see you back on the business transformation operational excellence summit on process mining on august 10th so for now goodbye from san antonio texas to the amazing leaders that we have here from around the world.